Hello there everyone and welcome back to Equestrian War and we're playing as Zerantia. I'm your host, Mr. Tribal Council Lover, but we gotta talk about the heir apparent. As representative the Amsarmud, I approve. As Zagwa spoke, it struck Umala as how odd the sight of the assembled chieftains around her would have been just in her mother's youth. Back then, the tribes gathered out of necessity more than anything else, and yet these days they were together nearly constantly, and if not the chieftains, then at least a trusted representative. It was another testament to what her mother had achieved, whatever one thought of the methods. As a representative of Tobuk, I approve, Menna's words followed, and Umalaz suddenly wondered how many would object. There would be some, but her mother's old servants had all stood by her. Some would speak out in protest, there was one way forward as a chieftain in Zerantia these days, and that was to play the game that McCoy's had established. As a representative of Tassawent, I approve. She let out her breath, she didn't know she had been holding. For all her respect towards Wiwurg, she knew she was a zebra of ironclad principles. Her vote was sincere and it meant that what little risk there had been was gone. In the end, when the votes were tallied, she could rise up and accept the position of Agolid Queen, chosen by the tribes and cities and invested with the absolute authority over Zerantia. Agolid is dead. Long live Agolid. Nice. Well, we lose her as a... Or, oh, we lose oh, Umala's Atagan as an advisor. Oh, well. Inspiration leader is still not bad, though, to have. Uh, Menes Amnaz Amastaga? Uh, sociopathic bureaucrat. Uh, interesting. I don't mind this one. I always use something like that. Let's choose. This would be something I don't normally choose. So I'll have to choose that one. Oh. Oh. Hello. Uh, but we're settling the coast, my friends. We are settling it right now. Even though I think I read this last time. If you read it again, please go right ahead. And then, uh. The deploy. Or deeply rooted. Amsisi. The guiding principle of our nation is and will always remain that of Amsisi. has become an obvious concept. The tribe is not the end-all be-all, and friends or foes are easily found beyond it. But some comments include, you can easily win against Chirptera as both Tobuk and Zerantia, but you need to draw them in. Set your army in Tobuk and the two tiles next to it and let the bats march in. Huh. Tobuk. Set your army in Tobuk and the two tiles next to it. One, two. Ah, uh, like up here. And then let the bats march in. Well, kind of-ish. They go to the desert, but quickly lose supplies before they close, before the closest supply hub. So if I press F4, supply hub, supply hub. Um, then you close the trap and circle most of the bad army. You can do it once and win, or a couple times and very easily win. You need to be the masters of the desert to win this war, though. I did try that, but well, maybe not exactly like that, but something similar to that. But oh, good, good to know. I'll probably screw it up in the future again, but you know, whatever. Uh, thank you for the comment, and uh, I'll try to do that next time. Let's attempt to. Someone else says, uh, set Equestria up for civil war next time you play in Zebrica because they won't attack you. They'll be focused on the civil war instead until Nightmare Moon is defeated. Hello, what do we have here? Trade interdiction? I guess we have to go that way. Someone else says, yeah, given a little bit longer, you may have had a chance, but it's hard to win against an ultra militaristic state like Chiriptera. I don't see how you could have done things better other than focusing slightly more on the army. Uh, someone says, I don't think you need a torpedo computer for a cruiser with no torpedoes. Very good. Yeah, I, I agree. I completely agree. But let's settle the coast first. The black old. The hidden wealth. And we could use the hidden wealth. But I definitely want the compliance growth speed and less resistance to K-speed too. Even though it's not too bad overall already. Mm, march progress. Allies. The black gold. Deep beneath our sands lies something more precious than gold. Gems or even crystals. Hoyle, the lifeblood of the new century. For Zerantia to prosper, we must tap the great deposits within our land, so that they may fuel the machine of progress. The North Zebrican Ore. Oh. oh, they're spouting down here too. An unequaled tradition. Yeah, it keeps popping up over here when we do this stuff, so... Yeah. There you go. Free camel tribes, huh? Do you guys have unique focus trees? It doesn't look like it now. Whoa, King Boltrus. Interesting. Interesting. And they're killing each other here. Do we like either side? No, and uh, not really. Interesting. This guy's side does not have very much manpower. They're all on extensive conscription, looks like. And you guys are also on extensive, so interesting. Wow. The black gold. Our own ability, not the hippogriffs, has liberated us versus foreign assistance. The march progress. 
Tide and tide. Time and tide waits for no merit. We've only started to build a strong and prosperous Zerantia, and instead of resting on our laurels, we need to launch ourselves forwards. And use the wealth we've gained to speed up our efforts. Oh, such a creator wants to do that too. Nice. Keep building yourselves up, why not? Uh Share the wealth, maybe, first. Uh, go there. Defense already, nice. Don't need it super really a lot right now, but that's okay. You never know. Ah, ours? Air or Eris? Probably Eris. Probably not Aris. Eris is uh, coming back. I want free trade. I don't like that. Oh. The hidden wealth, though, everybody. Ah. There's the problem. Umala said, look down the report a simple for her, unlike her mother. Uh, she had no issue uh, having people deliver news in written form. She had always been a fast reader anyway. Still, at the moment she was stuck staring at the words on the page, and the prospector standing in front of the desk couldn't help the matter since he seemed about to start uh, tip-tapping with glee where he stood. I believe you may have added in a few zeros to many, she said after a while, after being answered with fervent head-shaking. Oh, believe me, if anything, I've undersold it. The oil deposits we found in the deserts are immense. I am not exaggerating when I say this. Maybe it will be the foundation of Adrante's economy in the future. The trade, the agriculture, the everything, nothing of it can become close to this kind of resources. Oil is a future, and we're just cap catapulted into the very forefront of it. The royal will line up to be our customers. Even gold wouldn't bring this kind of wealth. Obelos was about to tell him to call himself, but I didn't have time before the excitement became too much for the pony, and he fainted where he stood. Gather Zerantia's finest mines began drafting plans to extract oil. Contact the world's most foremost companies in the field. So we do this route. Um, we can exploit it for ourselves. We might not get as much, but we get better benefits. Foreign assistance. The wealth available in the depths of the desert is beyond imagining. I'll make sure to invite the foremost oil companies in the world. We won't have as many resources to spend on our own program. The benefits for our trade is immense. Well, huh. Stock exchange. We're going to do all these anyways. Uh... I want to do the route that basically uh, where oh, look at that that's pretty good. Um, like I want to do this one our own ability just because with the hippogriffs did not do this for us. So next time we play this we might have to do the other route maybe probably not we'll see. The job's ingenuity is the greatest asset at our disposal. After all they have the know-how in digging deep wells and even if to uncover hidden water deposits rather than oil. There's no reason to doubt that they'll adapt to the new task quite easily. The oil fund. Ooh, more political power, multi population, better consumer goods. Ooh. Oil brings wealth. Wealth, however, is always accompanied by greed. The creation of specific institutions will help us prevent the concentration of wealth in the hooves of the few. Resources will be allocated to projects beneficial to all. Please, hopefully. War canoes. No, I don't like them. The Empire Strikes Back. Look at that, nice. Better recovery rate, even though we didn't release them that much? Sure, why not? Resistance is going up, actually. Plants going down. Huh. Strange. Oh, and they've actually launched a naval invasion. So that is interesting. Huh. Keep building this up. Press censorship is nice. Sure, why not? Finding allies between our strategic position and the wealth that rests beneath the desert. We're not only strong, but we're also wealthy. Zerante is a friend that, may, that many nations would happy to have, and we're more than happy to formalize this. Nice. The Zerantian railroads. The trains are loud, noisy, complicated, and really wonderful. Hundreds of tons of cargo, easily enough for a great caravan, all carried at speeds we couldn't even dream of. Uh, this is more than a vehicle. It is a key to Zerantia's trading future. New centuries, new laws. Ooh. A changing society demands changing laws. What exact taxes are we supposed to apply to electronic devices? How low can the airplanes that now cross our skies fly? How should we treat pa patents? There's so much to decide here. And there you go. Happy August, everybody. Honoring the greatest Agulid. Macoise Atagan was more than an Agulid. She was the founding mother of Zerantia, the liberator of Tobuk, and the one who elevated the Imaziba. As the capital grows, it might not change name, but it will surely be shaped in her memory. Hmm. The Zerantian Court. 
Around the Queen of Zrantia, a vast organization of civil servants and bureaucrats is emerging. Well, no need to be tied closely to the rest of the nation if the Queen is to be able to continue her duties to the people. But, the, uh, alas for Zerantia. As Zerantia is taking its rightful place in the world, we must nevertheless understand that we're not supreme, and that we are surrounded by giants. Tobuk <clears throat> uh, brings up to our people, but next to the mighty cult egg, it limits, it, it limits show itself. In order to ensure that we never can be threatened again, we must look for allies that stand by our side. The question is who should we approach, or whether we should trust in our own strength. After all, it brought us as far. Mergypt has always been a profitable partner. Zerantia stood alone and shall continue to do so. Does Mary Egypt have a unique focus tree? Oh, King Kefler. Oh, they don't, darn it. That sounds, Mary Egypt sounds really cool. Um, we've been pretty independent by for ourselves, and we're on our own, so... Huh. Foreign assistance? Well, if we go this route, we should go finding allies. Oh, I kind of want to go alone, but... Hmm. We have these guys under us. You know what, we're going to... Let's, let's keep it alone for now. We're on our own ability. We're going to stand alone for now. Is that smart? Probably not. Huh. So we'll do the Iron Roads and Iron in the Great Agulet, and I want to do the Zerantian Court. But what is the Bokharan supplicants? The Bokharans are strange people, and for the longest time, we've been content to uh, mind our affairs while they mind theirs. Still, they're distant kin to the Emazib all the same, and they've come before uh, Umalez with their heads bowed. Hmm. Another infantry division, nice. Anything here special? Hmm, not really too much. That we really would want there right now. Nuclear reactors are still ahead of time, just a little bit. More encryption is good. Go and train a little bit more. And what do we have? Anything here we really want? Not so much. Oh, we're not done with our land option. Infiltration in depth. Recon would be nice. More, need, more recon on our divisions would be nice. Yeah, these guys are looking decent. The Desert Patrol. Traditionally, the tribes have kept watch over the lands of the desert, but there's those little duties were laid to rest. We need something else. The solution will be the Desert Patrol, an elite force of militarized police that will be equipped to watch over and keep order across the entirety of the Zebhara. The Iron Roads. Oopsie, let's do... Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. We can do... Let's do this one first, just because we get more political power. Oma has been a young child visiting Kolteg when she first had seen a train. She had seen them from far away first, and thought they were some kind of giant snake. The fact that it had scared her, and the noise it gave off as it approached had scared her enough that she had hidden behind her mother. Yet after she got over her fears, the sight of these iron beasts had spurred her imagination. She filled her notebooks with drawings of them, even imagining the trains that could go over the sands without the needs for rails. Some things you had to leave aside when you grew up, but not her adoration of trains, as she smiled wildly as she walked through the half-finished rail station. In here will be the waiting hall. The architect said he showed her around the area to be one big old open area. And whenever the weather allows, the doors in each end will be open and allow for a nice cross breeze, if you ask for. Uh, as you ask for, there will also be drinking fountains in every corner as well as out on each platform. It was like a dream come true, and Umalez felt giddy at the sight of the building. Sure, it wasn't a great palace, but, but like a building like this, that creature would flood in and out of daily it was just the kind of thing she liked. Beautiful and practical things for the regular creature. And what more would be where trains arrived, stepping out on the platform. She looked out across the railways and imagined that the trains would run past her soon. For all the benefits this brought to her home, man, she couldn't help but enjoy it on a much more selfish level. I should have had a railroad built all across Azarantia. Because I actually wanted the Crossroads Kingdom. Liberating Bukhara. The Bukharans call and we answer. Their overlords maintain their right to rule over them. We will show them that through the though the Imazib have changed, their ferocity is not. Puppet war goes against Puppet War goal against Kwagatai. Bukhara can be core by Zerantia. Over here, huh? Ooh. That's not ideal. No, don't even go over there yet. I'm gonna hang out all around here. It's fair, nice. We're gonna need to spend some time building, aren't we? Oh, yes, we are. Oh, we square up and steal. Hmm. We need that one too. We have enough political power for that, because why not? Oh, you're almost done. Keep going with it. And the Trans Zabharan Railway. Zabhara has been an internal barrier. A line across the map that divides north and south Zebrica, the edges of it thrive off the trade that flow past it, yet now, the technological progress of recent years make the impossible possible. A great railroad, a road of iron, cutting straight through it. 
Yeah, which long ago was but a dream in the eyes of a young McCoy's is now reality, and Zarante is starting its grand project to build a railroad across the Separan Desert. Trans Zeparan Railway Initiative decision time. Well, those, that road's almost done, which is nice. Good. But then supply stations might take a while. Eh, it's a few months, which is just, overall it's not too bad. Uh, can just do it. January's not bad. Siege of Rex. These guys are doing really well, but we're going to continue expanding Azarantia. This doesn't really affect us in any sort of way, which is nice. Zamfara Well is an oil farm which we read already. Uh, deep sea canoes and uh, we have here anything else we really want, need? Bolt rifles mechanized. Recon is always good to do. Artillery is looking decent, probably. Happy December, everybody. Um, when's the next one? It's a uh, while wow. ago. Right, do that one. Zarantian Court. Around the court, the Queen of Zarantia, a vast organization of civil servants and bureaucrats is emerging. One that needs to be closed, uh, tied closely to the rest of the nation if the Queen is to be able to continue her duties to the people. Yeah. Yeah, I do want to spend it as well. Supplicants. Crossroad Kingdom. For a long time, the lands of the Emazib were seen as distant frontiers far from civilization, yet now, in the marriage between the Emazib and Tobuk, and between the Sea Desert, we stand tall and proud as one people and the nation we built together. Shiraz, huh? Still building them. Build, 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 build. Pulse code modifications. Some of the oil. I'll grab some of this too. Happy 1014. Nice. The court of Zarantia. The presiding over a state where the tribal chieftains used to rule supreme, the Agulid Queen of Zarantia, Omalaz Atagan, deals not only council debates and diplomatic meetings, but also with loudly shouting tribal chieftains and flying horseshoes. It is a highly unorthodox kind of government, but most things about this most recent uh, about this most recent monarchies are. Raised to the throne by the efforts of her mother and predecessor, Makoiza Atagan, Agulid Queen Umalaz, rules over two halves of a whole, the Imazib tribes of inland Zarantia and the mere Egyptian descended ponies of Tobok that came together in 961 after the Tobokians rebelled against Warzenim. Umalaz, like her predecessor, has contended with the two entirely different forms of politics, while the Tobokian political game might seem quite familiar to the average equestrian. The Imazib have for centuries worked not through laws and contracts, but verbal agreements enforced by honor and tradition where vengeance was justice. To the average outsider uh, observer hour, it may seem like the tribe zebras are a loud and disruptive presence in the Agulid's Queen's court, but to the more keen-eyed observer, there is a careful balance being struck in every debate. The Agulid's word is fine, but to those tribes, the art of objecting is as essential as anything else. It is how they escape the need for more violent forms of protesting. They'll rail and yell in protest to the Queen Agulid's decree so they can prove to the tribe's people, effectively their constituents, that they still have a voice and the Agulid Queen respects their right to debate, protesting even at times insolence. Do you have a question? This attitude that the Agulid Queen Umalaz is met with might might seem beyond disrespectful to the Zarantians. It is proof of the mutual respect that permeates her court. Quick scoop, Equestria Daily. Cool. Do we need uh, uh they're not connected, connected just yet. You know what? We're gonna build one down here too. Because we got the time for it. About a month, it's not bad. Oh, we're gonna do that one immediately. A legacy to last. Well, I definitely want to do this one next, so. Advanced resource extraction. Our oil industry has come a long way. Primitive rigs and equipment are now being phased out for cutting-edge machinery. Pumps work every day and night to bring forth the black gold from beneath the shifting sands. Not a single drop will be, of course, wasted. The Zamfara Wells. Our prospecting team have discovered the extensive oil deposits around Zamfara, deep beneath the ground. We'll be quickly dispatching construction crews and newly bought equipment in the designated sites so that they may prepare the wells. Alright. Automatic turret lathes. All right, so can we come over here now? We built it up for a reason. Of course, it is the, our guys are forty combo with so they follow the soft post. I still need to play as Daybreaker. Question doing really well though. 
Romulus held out the bowl of Ignati to the distant guest in front of her, smiling as he took it and drank carefully before handing it back to her. She could tell the zebras around her were surprised by her actions. Though he was a chieftain of the high honor and status, he was still a Bakharan, and the Emma's relation to their very distant cousins in the east had always been a wary one. Your hospitality is fearless, noble Agulin. And I'm honored to sit in your house, the house equal in honor and dignity to your nation. He gave the bull back to her with his head bowed. The Bakarans did not weather the last years much better than the Imazib had, but unlike the Imazib, the Bakarans did not manage to reassert themselves and instead were trapped under the iron hoop of the Quagatai and the Kam. Makwaz had made overtures to them many years ago, but they had politely rebuffed her back then, of course. Desperate times had, been, had a way of making old, making old familial ties bubble to the surface. That's a long overdue meeting, cousin, but I'm happy to welcome you. Umbala smiled as she accepted the bowl from him and drank as well. It was a careful dance. One that likely would take days if customers would be observed, or customs would be observed, not customers. It would be, that is why the Bakarans were here. The Quagatai overlordship chafed, and they had decided to take their chance with the Zarantians in hopes that the Amsisi would give them their honor and independence back. And as am I, and if the gods will, I hope we may see the future meetings like these. Many of these, like, many future meetings like this. Of course, and I would not expect a gift like this every time, he smiled slightly at her, and Umbalaz returned it. As for her, the Bakarans were their distant relations. And uh, controlling it would be further strengthening their hold on the trans african trade. It would shield their eastern flank and diminish Akan's power, and as her mother taught her, sometimes good and the profitable align quite well. Bakara calls, and Zoranti will come to their aid. Or you betcha. So we're still building that, and it's done. Beautiful. Build, and build. And then when you're done, build a little bit more. Train a little bit harder. Go ahead. What do we got here? What ships do we even have? Oh, we did go with the Navy. The Khan's refusal. The response from the Quagatai was all too predictable. Umalaz looked down at the document in silence. He had refused to even entertain the notion of letting Bokara go and mocked her for giving them ample warning uh, of her impending invasion. After all, they wrote, surprise was her only real advantage. A low sigh rose from her. Was she going to do this and thousands to their deaths? Oh, yes, of course she was. For the oaths had given to these had referred to as cousins. For the honor of her people to not lose face in front of the entire world to strengthen the Zerantia. A hundred reasons were all lined up, and she realized now that more than ever, the kind of force uh, had driven her mother. So, so be it then. My people go to war. Let's stock up on a little bit of fuel first, and we actually might want, to, want one of these. And you might want some of this too. Maybe. Hmm, I guess we'll go with cast, but I don't think we have enough really for anything like that. Uh, fighters, fighters, you know. Um, okay, well, I we can't use them. Interesting. Well, cold egg. Alright. The proliferation of several mechanisms. I want to help out our steel as much as we can. Is anyone here? Khan Zagu, trading with Colt Egg. Well, that's not going to last very long, is it? Future foreign policy, huh? Um, do they have any divisions or what? They got a lot of manpower. That we'll see. Now we're on the offensive. So fast we can actually move in, but we'll see. Engineers are nice. I'm sure supplies are going to suck a lot as soon as we get in here. My god, it's going to be god awful. Oh, good lord. Oh! The United Kingdom of Bear is looking pretty thick, or at least pretty long. How's our world going? 17,000. 22 divisions, not bad. We got a little supply here. That's good. And a little bit of supply right there. Not a lot, but some. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Or squeeze me. Either one of those two. I have a feeling those guys are going to be down before we know it. Underground facilities, go and get some more efficiency, because I'm sure we could use more steel. Yeah, we're just kind of waltzing right on in. Uh, peace conference is over, huh? Probably not us. It's probably, uh, changelings, yeah. 
Hey! Maybe we got a little bit of supply here too? Maybe? So far, pretty easy war overall. Legacy to last. That's a cruel thing to be born out of the great. Or be born of the great. When your lineage held the great, the demands, held the great, the demands placed on you became equally great. You could labor your entire life and never measure up uh, to these times, no matter what you accomplish. Yet, as Umalas had slowly come to realize, the person you compared yourself to was always above you in your own head, no matter what you did. Sitting on the balcony overlooking Tobuk, she thought about her mother, and whether she had, had doubted it herself. Logically, she must have, but thinking back on the implacable Makoiza, it was hard to imagine it. Her mother could have been ruthless, even cruel, and she never seemed to hesitate when she finally acted. Meanwhile, Umalaz never truly stopped doubting herself. Had she stood here a few years ago, she would have concluded that she was unworthy of carrying on her mother's legacy. Yet time brought clarity, and the actions she had taken herself had brought her understanding. Her mother had doubted herself, and for she would have been foolish not to. Well, that's with so much on the line, she would always have wondered if she'd done the right thing. She hadn't just shown it as she was surrounded by those who would pounce on that weakness. Her mother was just a, a regular, as much a regular zebra as any zebra else, but she had just risen to the task she had assumed, like Umalaz now had. Zerantia was prosperous, of course, and strong, and they were finishing their transformation into a truly a modern nation without having truly lost who they were. Makoiza had started, but Umalaz had completed it. That was the key to not drown in your own self-doubt, not to try to accomplish what those who towered above you had done, nor was to seek what they sought. With this realization, she had found peace. We did a mother, and we gained a revered Agalid for more recruitable population factor, more stability, and better political advisor cost. Nice. We're still doing okay. Oh, Bokhara. Oh, we got Bokhara itself. Look at that. Nice. Keep going on in. Oh, that's quite a few guys so far. Not bad. Moral construction, though. I don't think this is really reaching uh, as far as we hoped it would. Yeah. How do we go from here all the way to there? Good luck. And here. To there. Good luck. We're gonna need it. Oh, I feel like Germany, 1941. Oh, and it gets the Soviet Union. Potion of heroism. The fall of the Actown. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. And okay, we just got there. So in the end, they had four uh, support equipment and 11 bolt action rifles and maybe a truck. Maybe a single truck. Alright. Thank you, sir. Yeah, local autonomy, oil fund. <sighs> Darn it. Local autonomy is still not bad, but still. Visit patrol. Hey, look at our oil. I think it just made our steel consumption worse. Oof. All right, so you guys, immigration. Integration. Integration. The one, two, three, I think that's it. A four? Yeah, it's four. You everything else? Oh, I guess we can integrate these guys too, huh? I think everything else is just too far for us to integrate. Most of this is not bad, but still. Um, probably want to move you guys out of here. Let's see. Let's go back over here. This should be fine. And drain us of oil. Why not? Chief Tinzinan's request. Oh, look at these guys. A message has arrived over Tobok, the courtesy of Tinzinan. If there's any zebra who can be said to rule over the Azir, the former slaves who rose to this position of high chief would be the one. The message is blunt and to the point, as to be expected from the Azir tribes. Your strange roads will agitate Ijim, build them elsewhere. But well, the message has come a, a map of the region, where the alternate routes have been drawn out. I demand more resources to build in such a way, but no zebra is seriously indulging the idea that we should ignore the warnings. Them Ijermd are the heralds of the goddess of endings, and one single worm could wreck the whole railroad and kill scores of workers. The messenger had remained behind to take our answer, but the question is if this is not a good as time as any, to contact the Azir tribes and see what accord we can find with them. The Agolid is underway to meet with them personally. 
Oh boy. The Zajhari Wells. Our expedition from Zajhari has returned with excellent news. New deposits have been discovered in the area. Now, they might not be as extensive as others are, but they're also not too deep underground, and this will undoubtedly make extraction easier for our crews. How about a little bit? The March of Progress. All will Zeep under one banner. And will and we will not be called to war? The Tin Zinan asked where he had sat across from uh, the tent from Umalas. When you build, you won't agitate Ejermd. You will dig wells and provide food in times of famine. Umalas nodded after every question Tin had. In the end, he locked eyes with her, studying her for a while before asking why. I'm CC, Umalas responded plainly. My mother told me that all Imazib are kin. You are Imazib. She would have gone further, but she had long understood that to the Azir tribes, laconic answers were the best. Were trophies to show your mother was correct and uh, Zinan's eyes narrowed? A distant family, Umalaz insisted. I want to uh, gather that family. And will we be the children? Cousins, Umalaz smiled widely. Ornally cousins. At this, Tin Zinan gave up a bark of laughter. It was the first time he'd even smiled during her time here. Very well, cousin, he told her. I will spread the word. Azir is yours. No, Tin Zrantia is ours. Oh, shnikes. Holy crap. God dang, they're onto you thick. Look at all the roads we can build here. Ah, oh, I love the desert. No, actually, actually, this desert's not a bad place to be. I, if I actually lived in the desert, I probably wouldn't like it. But overall, not bad. Nice. Look at these guys. Too bad. We need more oil. What else is new? I'm an American. The new century infrastructure. Long pipelines are still now snake across our lands, delivering the precious black gold and newly built plants in constant flow. From there, now barrel loaded trucks travel across highways towards distant markets. Oil is the resource of the future, and therefore requires equally a novel infrastructure. Are we out of rubber? Yeah, we're a little bit, tiny bit out of rubber. Nice. Anything over here? Yeah, sure. We don't have a lot of air XP, do we? Or at the very least, let's get some fighter weapons. I'm not sure which is the best. Improved cannons? Aircraft cannons? Probably improved. Uh, armor plates. On the plates. There you go. What are we missing here? Anti tank? There you go. Oh! The Shirza Bakara Row Initiative. Okay. Expanding the Trans Baron to Kamal Kand. Interesting. The target country also gained its natural spirit. Better consumer goods and factory output. Threns is apparent to Dromagan. Interesting. And Kamein. Hmm. Opening the heart of Zebraka to the port of Kothik. Opening the heart of Zebraka to the port of Ein Throtgorait. Interesting. And more expansion, of course. My bad. There you go. There you go. Season infrastructure. Um, the new methods of agriculture for a long time. Oh, uh oh. Our food production was held back by harsh environment and rudimentary techniques. No longer be the case. In exchange for oil, poor nations are ready to share with us not only their expertise but tractors and industrial fertilizers as well. Our people will never go hungry again. Nice. Yeah, Egypt. Yeah, sure. I require a border with them. The Tobuk Stock Exchange. Tobuk is no stranger to commerce and trade, but the great influx of wealth from the oil industry has brought all to new heights. Its fame now spreads all over the world from main hand to the Vlugals, and the stocks are rising accordingly. Beautiful. 
Boom times. Oils brought great wealth to us, and we wisely spread among uh, the many rather than the few. Hospitals, schools, and infrastructures have been built, and our people can now enjoy exotic products from distant lands. Zarante has changed, thankfully, for the better. Thank goodness. And where we got here? We need more fuel tea, but whatever. Uh, wide scale prospecting. We now expand our extraction operations to a degree never before seen. Thanks to the constant efforts of our tireless prospector teams, new deposits have been discovered each month. Not a stone will be left unturned. The desert blossoms. Ooh, when centuries ago, our ancestors dug the first irrigation canals across the dry Zabhara. Could they have envisioned this outcome? The wealth and knowledge of the New Ages allowed us to bring their work to completion. We, too, took on the desert, swore that we would not let it defeat us, and here we stand victorious. Ooh, rural region, pastoral region, modifies a desert flowering to further grant more stuff. The desert stands in bloom, and though at first glance it might seem the same as before, it's been tamed, and now welcomes those who live in it. We were just for boom time, so. Modern science in uh, society. As more and more complex machines are introduced, we can no longer depend on the experience of foreign experts. Curriculums uh, must be revised in new t uh, specialized schools open for eager young minds. There, Zerantia's future will truly take form. Our offer is refused. Sadly, it seems the United Kingdom of Eris has refused our offer, and our plans to expand the railroad through their territory will have to be put on ice. Perhaps they'll change their mind in the future, but perhaps now, the rail stops at the border. Well, darn it. We didn't get that very many overall in terms of trying to build stuff, but honestly, most of them, most of them rejected us. They only got two of them done, so. Living threat. Oh. Border scouts from where? Rather large army? Oh, it's probably Cherub Terra. But, well, that's pretty much it. We've done all the focuses that we possibly can. Karasik is looking very handsome. Um, and they're not even a puppet, which kind of doesn't make any sense to me. But, our army's pretty good. And I didn't realize how big Zerantia could actually become, so. Uh, but here it is. All the focuses are finally finished and done. So, if you enjoyed the campaign, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know what other nations I should do in Equestrian War. I would love to know. And I will see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.